All right, so uh, another development kit, uh, ironically, but I happened to have bought this and I was really excited to see the differences. So this is the Strike Freedom Fighter, which is the Master Grade Strike Freedom made by Dobbin. Um, there's a lot changed on the actual mold. Unfortunately, I don't have the original Strike Freedom to compare, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys everything it includes. I do not have the box for this. Uh, the way I purchased it, the box was not included, um, but I do have all the parts. Uh, it's just the way they packaged it. It was a lot cheaper to not actually use the original box. So I'm going to go through the little stuff first. Uh, they have these. They are very small. They're just the uh, little pegs that go in for all of the dragoons to move. Uh, they're bendable a little bit. Uh, two very small basic beam savers for the clear parts as well as the shield pieces. Uh, I have two of these which are the same thing. Uh, very very thin. Uh, very bendable as you can see. There's almost no depth to them at all. And I didn't take these out, so I didn't damage them. But this is the sticker and the decal set. Pretty basic decals, nothing crazy. Uh, first I'm going to do is the gold parts. I'm going to try and set both out, since there's a lot of runners to go through. Uh, you guys, you know, you can pause if you want to get a better look. But these are uh, coded, so there's going to be, you know, if you want them to be just assembled and done, it'll look nice. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to strip off the gold coating and repaint them. <clears throat> There's actually a lot of them. <laughs> Here, I'm just going to set them all out because there's so many of them. Uh, now, there's actually double uh, for all the limbs, but I didn't. I separated them so you only see singular of the runners. Uh, but as you see, they're like super, super shiny. The plastic quality looks really good. I was actually very impressed. Um, there's a ton of little detail in each of the parts. Uh, see if I can get a good shot of that so you can see all the detail. Uh, so that's the gold. Then we can get to the gray metal pieces for some of the inner parts, thrusters, uh, handles for the guns, um, portions of the entire guns itself. Uh, then we get to a lighter gray. Um, some of these parts are actually clear, so these will definitely have to be painted. I thought it was pretty peculiar. You might not be able to see with the camera, but these are all clear. Like, you can see through them all the way to the other side. Uh, here is the off-gray pieces, the off-whites, used for the uh, color contrast. And I'll go ahead and set out the reds, too, since both of these are so small. Uh, the reds are also plated, so they'll have to be stripped. Um, there's a little bit of a blemish on the front chest piece unfortunately uh, I don't again I don't know if it's gonna get through the camera well or not but there's a big black line that goes straight through where I guess the plating didn't settle correctly um, I always do love these off-color gray pieces they're really only for the real grades at the moment so it's pretty cool to see them on bigger kits um, I do build Bandai kits by the way it just so happens the last two I bought weren't uh, so here's the normal white pieces actually I think these are actually off gray as well this doesn't match. Uh, as you can see, they're actually two different shades. Uh, this is whiter, I guess. So maybe there's multiple shades of gray. Um, really, really good panel lines. It looks like this kit's gonna be super sharp once it's assembled. I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, so as you can see, the base is really big. Um, pretty heavy kit, so understandably so. Uh, so here's the uh, joints. You know, they couldn't plate those, so they just made it a yellowy gold color, which I'm fine with. I'm going to paint them anyway. Uh, the blue, the blue also looks plated, actually. It looks like this whole kit's going to have to be stripped, so that's going to suck. Uh, but this blue is also plated. It's like a metallic blue. It's not just a normal blue. Uh, more white runner pieces. Uh, there's a lot of detail. I actually really like this sculpt. Um, the Dobbin Zeta one I just did was the panel lines in the sculpt was a little more rounded and it kind of felt a little more toyish. Um, I was going to clean them up and sharpen the lines by rescribing them, but this one's like straight on point. Uh, they're very sharp, very crisp. Um, I'm very pleased with the runner so far. Uh, 
I am going to, again, try and snap build it as quick as I can. Uh, I have a very important commission I'm working on, um, a master grade heavy arms eagle conversion. So it's slowing me down, a, but I'm going to try and balance both projects at the same time. Uh, here is some of the black pieces. Um, they're actually really, really dark blue. Uh, here's another one. I'm sorry if they don't come quite off. It's really hard to get very bright and still be able to see everything without a glare. So hopefully you guys can see this all right. Uh, looks like most of this is just shoulder and, I don't know, maybe the back of the wings. Uh, here's the actual wings. Again, these aren't black black. They're very dark blue. Um, the colors so far look really good. They remind me strongly of real grade kits uh, because they have a lot of little panel line details and they have a lot of uh, slightly off color compared to just straight black, straight blue. Um, and I've always liked that. I feel like that's more eye catching for an assembled kit. So here's the wings themselves. Again, ton of detail. I will say that on these, I've noticed there's a couple little blemishes and stuff. It mostly looks like whatever metallic coating they used just didn't quite adhere perfectly. So for a snap, it's still gonna look good, but I would definitely, definitely strip it and repaint it uh, if you want you know, to really impress anyone. Uh, this is, I assume, part of the base. I didn't actually look through the guide at all. Uh, these things look crazy. So I'm pretty sure this is how the um, Dragoons connect and how it assembles onto the base. Um, actually, i got enough space here. I'll go ahead and bring out the base itself. So here's all of this. This First of all, these are really, really wonky runners. And as you can see, a lot of these actually broke off. Not necessarily coming shipped in, but just me trying to pull them out of the box. Like, they're they're barely, barely on here. I mean, you can see they're just bending. It's just one tiny runner trying to hold these huge pieces on. As for this, uh, it's very sturdy. The panel lines are really sharp. I will note that the little design here, uh, it has a lot of blur. Um, I'll see if I can, if you can see that. Uh, it's not 100% crisp. There's quite a bit of blur on the pieces. Uh, wherever there's a corner mark. Uh, let's see. This might not work. So... I mean, it's all right. It still looks good from afar, but up close you can definitely see where the paint didn't stick quite right. So that's all the pieces for this kit. Um, I'm pretty excited about building this one. It's gonna be pretty big. This isn't a commission or anything. This is just, I was really curious on the kit and I wanted to see how it got assembled together. So hopefully I'm gonna snap it together. It'll probably go on my backlog a while before I actually assemble it. So uh, tell me guys what you think. Uh, if you have any kind of videos you wanna see, I'd uh, be happy to make stuff different, just kind of getting a feel for YouTube. I'm not sure if you guys want tutorials or how I work or anything like that. Just let me know, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.